Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Board Game Backwards, where we play board games having never read the rules. I'm Shay. And I'm Brian. And I'm Cole. And today we are going to be playing Hadrian's Wall, designed by Bobby Hill and published by Garfield Games. Yep, sweet. Uh, let's see here. So it's 8.1. So that's pretty high. It's yeah. pretty high, highly rated. Yeah. 8.1. Not bad. Came out in 2021. It is 150 overall. And I honestly, I feel like the last time I looked it up, it was in the 300s like a, a couple months ago. So it's I can either be, up. I can either be very much mistaken. Yeah. Or it moved up a lot. I don't or know. Or like two years later, all of a sudden everyone got into Hadrian's wall. Yeah. Either way, 150. Respectable. Very respectable. Uh, one to six players, which is shocking to me if you have an 8.1 game at 150 and it's up to six players that's not very common yeah so love that if it's really fun i could see this getting to the table a lot because usually my game groups are about that are about six people yeah so. four four is pretty standard but if you have a six person game mm -hmm. it opens up a lot just because a lot of times you have four yeah players. yeah also just so we don't we don't look into a lot but just as a precursor to what we might find when we open up this box, it's voted that it plays best with one. Like, so when it says one to that. six, <laughs> it genuinely me like apparently, and it, people have voted that it plays good on one. So Interesting. there might be like alternative rules. I'm already like thinking ahead. I'm already getting ready. It's funny that it's one to six, but four, five, and six players is not recommended by the community. Really? Yeah. Big on <laughs> yeah. one and then sure two and three. Yeah, they're big on one, two and three. Yeah, go for it. And then they're saying, nope, don't do it after. Don't that. do it at six. That's oh, really here, here funny. That's really funny. That's like, that's like Mage Knight. We, Mage Knight, I heard, is uh, is killer at one player. Uh huh. So anyway, interesting. Okay. Well, it's thirty to sixty minutes. Uh, so with us, probably about sixty minutes. Uh, weight is three point one one. So solid medium and uh i'm excited artwork's kind of interesting it's cool it's a little the style is kind of i don't know i don't know how i feel about the style cartoon adjacent like not serious certainly but not funny it's like it's like a more darker more detailed version of like avatar animation hmm. I don't know. We have a Fire Nation we're looking at right now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I have no idea what this game's about. Hadrian's Wall sounds cool. So let's open the box and see what we're going with here. All right. Let's take all this out here. All right. Pen and paper. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Those are already used from the last owner. So we got big, beefy paper thingamajigs. Wow. They're intricate enough that they had wow. to give you a name. Hey, I, I can tell you right now, <laughs> it's going to take us so long to decide on how to play this without reading the rule. Oh. It's going to take us so long. And even once we decide to read the rule book, I feel like it's going to take a while to get through it. Yeah. Because okay. that is a lot. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of pictures and symbols mm -hmm. and... The iconography is nuts. Information. Nuts. Okay, I think everybody needs to take a couple of these. These little... They all look... Oh, they don't look the same. The numbers at the top are different. So everybody take a... A one, two, three, and a four, five, and a six. four, five, six. I have. Perfect. Oh, oh, I have... You already have both. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have our own little boards. Do you think every player gets one of these then? No, mm, I have no idea. Uh, or is it just one per game? I want to say no. That's my gut instinct, just because there's a lot of sheets here, but if you're playing six players, it's only going to take you a few games to run through this whole thing. Hmm. But it is a lot. But it is, a lot. it is a lot. I don't know either. 
I don't know either. Okay. Unbelievable. Holy smokes. Okay, we well, we can at least... Picts. It says one to six. There are not six no, different colors. Exactly. That's that's my thought. So... If there's not, then I guess we don't have our own color. But we got some gray... What looks to be almost loaves of bread. <laughs> well, bricks, weird chunks of... They're bricks as we build... Hadrian stone wall. Yeah, it's weird chunks of stone, and then we have uh, four different colored little Guys we have black yellow purple blue Okay, we did say six players. There are six one two three four five. Mm. There are six different colors of these red cards of cards, okay Red is dude with lion on head. That's Hadrian. Nice. Shay uh, I'm gonna go with blue all right I'm gonna take black. Ooh, my guy has got an interesting looking face. I've got an archer. I don't know what his he's got a, a smirk on his face, like he's pleased about something. I don't know. So these are art. Oh, I don't even know what, what these cards are, but they each have a, their own thing. Ranger, trainer, vanguard, architect, aristocrat, forger. Do you all have kind of the same titles? Mm -hmm, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Tetris. It look like they're all the same. Shape. Great. And then we have another deck. Stuff going on on the back. Another deck that looks like we all use with Viking looking people on it. Um, and these have people on them. Well, it has. So it looks like it looks like it might be some sort of worker placement. Well, at the top it has a direction. Yep. That's highlighted, right, left, or up. And the back of our cards give us right, left, or yeah. down. Uh huh. And it has a number under the helmet, which I'm guessing is like warriors, defenders, something. And then there's the cloth, the textile. I don't know what that symbolizes. Some kind of supply or resource. Some kind of resource. All right. I think. This wall of paper. Somewhere we're going to be able to determine which of the different colored meeples are going to do which thing. Because on the back of these cards, it also had like how many it's going to cost you. You got to have a certain number. So. Let's scour this guy to see if we can parse that. out. Looks like it's a six round game. Game ends at six rounds. Yep, and uh, each each ch round chunk has a gray banner that's separated from the other three, green, yellow, and red, that have warriors on it with four cards. So I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe it's like victory points for the best wall defender, victory points for the best... Like first, second, and physical third. Physical defenders, warrior defenders. Yeah, first, second, and third place type thing. I don't know. I don't know. Because the gap between them gets bigger as we go along in the game. Yeah. Like early on, we all basically have the same sized army, so we all just get one victory point for second, third, but then it starts rewarding you more later on. Yeah. Well, I mean, we looked at the, we looked at everything. Let's just dive in. Oh. It gives us a little code for what colors of the little peoples are. So the yep, there it purple is. is mining and forest foresting. And the black is the wall guard. The Night's Watch. Blue or black is four. I don't know. And then yellow. Mm. Does anybody see what yellow? Tra traders? Oh. Or performers. Or priests. So are they like civilians <laughs> type of thing? Like civilians are the yellow? I don't know. This is just like a nuts, like economy looking game. Yeah. Look, we could be here for the next three hours examining <laughs> we this. Absolutely. Could nothing, be here for three hours. nothing is going to change. And you know, I, I'm comfortable enough with who we are. Well, look, the main reason why we do this podcast is because it's fun. We don't, like that's the main that's reason. True. So 
even though we're board game backwards and we're all about trying to figure out a game, should we just take the L immediately? <laughs> I'm okay taking that. <laughs> I, I, I look at this and I... Cole, I'll give you 10 minutes. Okay. You can decipher what you will, but I'm thinking, I mean, the iconography is unlike anything I've seen. It's unreal. I mean, it talks about like buildings that you can do, hotels, workshops, building roads, granaries columns monoliths statues and each one it looks like it has like a, a bonus per round it talks about trainings per year how many years is it going to take us to play this game i don't know <laughs> and the other the other paper we have baths courthouse medium temple large temple small temple small garden large garden lattice gladiatorius theater market precincts oh here's those symbols Left cohort, center cohort, right cohort. I did see that, yeah, at the top there. For our um, our cards, it kind of instructs where you have to build it. So it seems like we're not just building a wall. We're building an entire city. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yeah, it's like, an, it's like a full like economy a, a full... game. I mean, it's telling you how to do the math. This For how much information we're getting... I still have no idea exactly. what a turn even looks like. Exactly. And that's why I say, like, we can look at this until the cows come Ooh. home, but I don't think we're going to get even 1%. Discipline, valor, pity, and renown. I mean, even just looking at... Each one has its own symbol. Like, even just looking at these, with all the different people... The performers and the priests and everything, and then there's one through nine, and some are dulled and with one color, and some are not. And there's thing like I don't know what any of that means, and I don't think I'm going to figure it out. But I do wonder if each thing is getting bubbled in for different things. Mm -hmm. Like it, I, I, I do feel like we might each get our own sheet. I think we're each gonna get our own sheet because here, like per complete row, you're just xing off whatever it is you're doing, <laughs> and you get one. What is that valor per completed row? Yeah, yeah, dude. I wouldn't even know how to no. start. Take the L. Wow. That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take the L. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new L record. <laughs> For the first time <laughs> in board game that backwards was, history. That was a good, I don't know. I don't know how long we talked before we even opened the box. We, we probably stared at this for maybe like seven minutes yeah. or something before we gave Under up. Under ten minutes easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Garfield Games. I'm impressed with the complexity of which we are... You've outdone yourself. Viewing. <laughs> I'm surprised it was only a 3.1. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that it is only 3.1, I bet it's really not going to be that hard once we yeah. look at the rules, which right. is a good we thing. get going, right. like, look at these cards, right? Like, it cards just requires yeah. a few dudes and a brick in order to... Yeah, once you understand what everything means. Do something. <laughs> yeah. Even so, 3.1 is probably one of the highest weight games we've played. Yeah. No. No, we played a 3.8 once. I don't remember which one it was. Once. I'm just saying it's, it's <laughs> at the top. It's not the top, but it's... I, it's pretty standard. It's right there in the middle. I feel like most of the time we play like a 2.4 or less. Um, but I'm not remembering them all perfectly. Yeah. But yeah, d just to remind you, like a Garfield, Garfield Games does things like Architects of the West Kingdom. Um, They do like all the... West Kingdom games, they do all of the Raiders games. Like, they're all kind of worker placement y. So, I'm curious to see how this one's going to look. Like, it seems like we're going to get these colored people and then we're going to use them as currency to buy things. So, anyway, let's go ahead and just crack the rule book open. Let's do it. Because we don't want to be here all night. Yeah, I can get some things after we learn. Okay. The aim of Hadrian's Wall is to be the player with the most victory points at the end of the sixth year. 
Players gain victory points by developing their fort, defending its walls, and by increasing their attributes. Players will need to carefully manage their workforce and resources to accomplish their chosen path. In the course of the game, each player will select six path cards, which they will tuck face up above their player board. These will score players additional VP based off how well they fulfilled each of their paths. These are what players will be aiming to fill in order to defend against the attacking picks at the end of each year. Anytime the cohort box is at the very top. Oh, okay. Anytime players fill in a box containing the cohort icon, which is like a shield, they immediately fill in the leftmost unfilled box of any one cohort in their sheet. So it's saying that that needs to be filled in first before you can fill those in. No, bottom, bottom top. So like the fort, that fort thing with the helmet in it mm -hmm. needs to be filled in before you can fill in either of the things above it. So you see how he's going sippy from left to right? Mm -hmm. And then on the wall, he can fill in all those that have chains going from bottom to top until he gets to the one that doesn't, until he gets to the fort that isn't filled in. So he can't fill in... He can't fill in any four. He can't fill in any of the wall or the sippy until he finishes the four in this section. Uh, just the chain, I think. So you can fill in those first two in that section because the oh. chain's going up from the. Okay. Uh, for example, this player has already. We can just look at this example real quick. For example, this player has already arranged two performances. Those two, based on their filled boxes of the performers track, they could return one resource to the main supply to arrange either the last remaining performance on the left column or the top performance on the right column, because they're up to six. Mm -hmm. So they could do three or six. Wait, they could do... So they have two filled out. They have the two one filled. In f the one and five. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're up to level six, so they uh, could do three, or they could, or do, they six. could do six, gotcha. but they can't do oh. higher than that. Yep. So if you're filling in the boxes, but you want to battle again like two years later... What is that? Like, that gladiator's dead. You'd have to, like, train the other gladiator. Mm -hmm. So you can only fight... Twice, and that's it. Twice. You're done. Well, unless he survives. So if you yeah. had three, so and he only takes one damage... But even if they survive... That one in. And then the next year, you oh, can yeah. do another circle, and maybe only takes mm. one. If they survive, you and get so renown, and you get stuff. to battle again. Yeah. But if they die... That's it. Ciao. How to use a paper? Wait, what you? No, oh. you circle the. Yeah, once little red thing. Yeah, once the the two spots or however many spots have been filled, to circle the favor to remind you that you have it. Okay, but we don't know what favor is yet. No. Okay. If I, if I was writing the rule book, I might put that next. Well, just saying. Baths. <laughs> Bats are next. <laughs> Idiot. <Cole. laughs> but I wonder what a favor is. In Roman times, when gaining so favors. You get the valor and the two favors, and you assign yeah. it to a cohort. Or do you just circle the favors and then oh, you get Oh, I get those it. You, you assign one of those three cohorts. What? Sorry? Yeah, you get the favors. You do get. You get mm -hmm. Yeah, you so get cool. the, those three things, and then you assign. Okay, this. Valor and these two favors are going to go to my left cohort. And this right. one's going to go to my right. Are the favors the same as so these little get there? <laughs> when See, gaining favors, put the instructions for the favor players already. should circle around the favor icon to show that they are now available. Players also need to specify the cohorts, which cohort these favors will be available to indicate this. Fill in the arrow. Uh, scouts. An important part of defending the Mile Castle is effective scouting. This action has players filling in various patterns from prospect cards on the map on the scouting section of their right sheet. Oh, uh, here's the Tetris. Forgot about that was even part of the game. Interesting. <laughs> what the... Craziness. Okay. To take this action, players require a certain number of tracks uh after doing so players should fill in the scout box with the horse icon to indicate that you did it where am i this now allows them to fill in their map with a single pattern players may use a pattern on their own prospect card or from one of their immediate neighbors 
If using their own, the soldier being used should be returned to the main supply. If using their neighbor's pattern, the soldier is given. Players may use the same pattern multiple times in the same year. Granted, they can afford the cost of each action. Okay. What? What? <laughs> what? So we fill in the horse, and then we look at our little doohickey uh, here? Yep, or our neighbors. Or our neighbors. And you, you draw that anywhere here, and you'll get resources if you, if you draw your shape on it. But only on your this one, not on your that one. This is a prospect. That's a something right. else. The card up here is going to be tucked, and it's yeah, not usable. You won't even see it. But the card to your to your right, the card that you don't pick, the card that you didn't place underneath, your, uh -huh. is the card you picked f to use potentially f for your scout. And you can either take that or take. But if you take somebody others. else's, you give them a soldier. You give your soldier okay. instead of spending your soldier. Oh, okay. Because that's the cost is one soldier. Okay. And so we're trying to complete rows in order to get valor. Valor. As well as we get those bonuses for filling in those squares. Okay, so it has nothing to do with scouting out where they're going to attack next, because that's immediately where my mind at. No. It's like, look at the top of the card, you get to see which cohort they're going to attack. You, yep, that's not. Okay, all right. Also, the horses. You have to pay scouts to play Tetris. Yeah. Okay. The <laughs> horses are not anywhere. It's not where I board. thought that. Mechanic was gonna go. Fill in the horse. Horse means play Tetris. <laughs> yeah. Each arrow revealed. Each player needs an equal or greater number of filled boxes on the associated cohort. So in the example above, they need at least one filled box on their center and two on their right. Yep. One filled box on yep. the on the top. On the these cohort. whatever cohort it is that's being attacked. Oh, okay. So we know we're only getting one card at the end of our first year. So, so as long you're just as you rolling the dice one of each of each. Then you're you're, safe. you're, you're gonna be safe. It's a lot of resources. Though. But if you want to just like not do the right cohort, you know, and gamble, yeah, feel free. Well, no, it's not just. Well, it's one of these, right? So like, if I put, mm -hmm. if I spend a soldier and put it here, I get a cohort here. But I would a have to spend wherever three you want. No, wherever you want. You can put it at the cohort right center wherever you or left. Want. Right, but I would have to spend three over here to get a, a cohort. No, so over this here. These ones you have to go left to right. You have to fill in all of this to get to here. But every time you get a shield, you can fill in any left to right in each one. So of the these. first box on the mining and foresting, or I mean on the wall and the guard, you get to fill in a cohort anywhere. Right, and then on Even your in the third. Right you get to choose another space. Yes, but you were just you guys were just saying that all you have to do to be safe, it's simple. All you have to do is have one cohort in each one. I'm pointing out that you have to have one, two, three, four, five, six soldiers Not necessarily, in order to achieve that. Because you could do three soldiers and then you could build up five walls. Yeah. Easy. So there's different ways to get certain things. Or five. There, fort but will give it to, to you, wall five, will give yeah, it to you, sippy will give it to you. Five walls, yeah, you also to get to have five to walls, you have to have, forts. Yeah, a bunch of I just I was just saying it's a gamble. Okay. <laughs> there is no way to defend every cohort on the first round. That's what you think. Prove me wrong. Okay. Also, I mean, they put the little symbol for piety in that little flag. It would have been cool if it was Valor. It is. The symbol for piety where? Is in this little yeah, flag. That was foolish, to be quite honest. Yeah. Lame. If they fail to defend. Not like there's 400 other things. That what's the name of the guy who game? designed this? <laughs> Bobby. Bill or. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Okay, well, I yeah, think we should Bobby read his Hill. name so that we can refer Game designed to him. by Bobby Hill. Okay, Bobby. <laughs> no, see, don't put this on Bobby. This all goes to Sam Phillips, who is the art and graphic designer. Okay, Sam. Sam. Sam, get with the program. You put the valor symbol on the flag. The piety symbol on the flag when it should have been the valor. Yeah. 400 other little symbols. That and Bobby. Got right. Bobby. The scout should be used to look at the where the 
the picks are going to attack. Which cohort they're going to attack. Come on, man. It's a pretty universal use of scout. That is, that's literally <laughs> what scout means. Scout means look at the top of the card so you know which cohort is getting attacks next round. No, but here's the thing. There are things that we will do with market and gladiators which will, will flip the, so that could change. So they should true. almost be separate decks. There should be a function where Come I... Come on, Bobby! <laughs> <laughs> Separate decks, man. Not to not to criticize a game I've never played. <laughs> all right. If they fail to defend all the attacks, they will gain disdain for each attack they let through, up to the amount indicated on the gray flag for that year. So we can only gain one disdain. I don't want any disdain. Okay. <laughs> but think about it. You can fix your disdain problem... By literally getting up to three on Bass and then paying one resource for it. How many, how many years is that going to take? What are you talking about? That's easy. Getting it, it Bass... Costs three civilians just to get a bath, and then two... One worker and two... Okay, it costs... Yeah. Guy, so six plus two resources. <laughs> I mean, it's going to take years <laughs> to get one okay. disdain removed. Done. Those thems be the rules. Thems be the rules. Okay. So, thoughts. Do we think that this game so far seems like the weight? Harder, easier? I think there's a lot. I think it's not going to be hard to remember what everything does, but I think it's going to be really hard to, like, see my options. Like, I feel like it's going to be a pretty lengthy... There's only six years, but it's going to be a very quiet... Like, we're just going to sit here and be like, okay, so if I do that, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Do that. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, are you I guys done? So. Great podcasting. <laughs> yes. That this, exactly This it. is going to definitely be a type of game that the viewers are going to want to tune into for... They're going to want to watch. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to want to remember to maybe walk through and... everyone vocally on what our thought process is uh -huh. at the expense of us giving away our strategy, but... Also, for the viewers. To be fair, we say that it all makes sense now, but as I'm looking, I've already forgotten roughly two thirds <laughs> of. It's definitely a lot do. to remember. I mean, luckily, there's pictures to kind of help you remember everything, but it is like I already am so foggy about the fort. What is this? The four makes perfect sense, but I'm looking over here, like the hotel and I'm, the workshops and stuff, and I'm like, wait. I don't remember market. Oh, that's it gives you per year. Okay, that's how you get your citizens and your builders and your stuff. Okay. Yeah. Got it. It gives you extra of each of those. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm good. I think I've got it. Okay, now remind me. Yellow is civilian. Yeah. Yeah. Purple is servants, servants, servants yep. soldiers, and workers. Yep, soldiers are black, workers are blue. Okay. So wait, so then if the fort's so clear, do you remind me what it, what are the yellow pyramids of stone? What are those again? It just represents you having achieved that level of fortitudeness basically yeah like it, you don't gain anything you don't get from anything those from it. it's, it's just, just like you've achieved level three yeah it's just signifying there's a flag underneath and on your second one you can build a small hotel and the four you have to go left to right it's also the block almost i think almost all of them you have to go left to right yeah almost all, basically on the left sheet it's all left to right yeah on the right sheet some of them don't have to be the gladiator has to be um, some of them have the to temple to bottom, has to go like from top temple. to bottom. Mm -hmm. All the actual civil citizen tracks have to be left to right. Yep, yep. So when you fill in the sippy and the wall and everything, what you're really going for, if you want cohort defenses, is just that cohort symbol, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I get attacked and I have two of these little sippy things filled in, that's really that doesn't do anything. The wall guard, the sippy, the wall, and the fort. Their purpose is solely just to defend. So yeah, we're really even though we get other but rewards, really you only get that defense. It's only realized when you get the when cohort you get symbol. the cohort symbol. Ooh, okay. So we're gunning for the cohort symbols, but we get rewards as we go. All right, everyone. Well, we've read the rules. 
And now we're ready to play. So I'm hoping there's not going to be a lot of rule book reading. I feel like all of us understand things differently. Like you might know, like I might know the wall very well and Brian, you might not, but then Cole might understand, you know, so we might all be able to ask questions to each other and hopefully not have to reference the rule book because that takes forever. So hopefully it'll go relatively smooth. We'll do our best to talk through the gameplay, but it's a very kind of like almost solo, quiet sort of experience. So in case we don't do super well in walking through what it is that we're doing, and especially if we talk over each other, I'd recommend just if you do want to, if you end up paying to watch it on by subscribing on Spotify or over on Patreon, I recommend watching it and not just listening to it. But we're going to dive in, we're going to play it, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it. All right, everyone, we are back. Uh, definitely, I don't even, I mean, I never know how much time, time in my, in, in my office just becomes, I don't even know. Like, I, I never know, know really how long a game takes. I don't pay attention that much, but it, it took a while. Longer than 60 minutes. Game lied to us. <laughs> or, or we're just stupid. So anyway. We are done. The final score was me at 48, Cole at 49, and Brian at 67. Hoo <laughs> So, a significant difference. Uh, and that difference really came through with the disdain. The disdain. My citizens loved me. They did. They loved having me in charge. Look, I deserve to lose because they just... They had so much disdain for me. I wasn't a good leader. You know? I let I we got attacked. I didn't hold the wall. You didn't hold I, the wall. I I pulled a Biden. You did. You and took down just, the wall. I took down the wall and everyone just flooded in. And there was disdain. That's a mess. Yeah. Creates messes. Yeah. So and and I think this the same definitely applies for Cole as well. It, it, he would have had a lot more points too. I made one bathroom deal. And other than that, was thumbs down from the people. Yep. But yeah, I we were just talking after we ended it. The path cards. Yeah. Were just. Some of them were really hard. Were you you hard. really had to pick and choose. It makes what me wonder, like, go for. was it? Is it like? Should you, I mean, if it's a simple tweak, like, oh, if it's between this and this, then I'll just go for that one because it's my path card. But other than that, it seems like the one victory point, it's not worth, like, you're you're better served trying to strength, get more cohort power to strengthen the wall. That's going to serve you a lot better than yeah. Yeah. paying a bunch of resources to get, what, one extra victory point? Mm-hmm. Well, for, for me, my last turn, it was a choice between going for gladiators and getting one victory point off my path card, or I could spend less resources and take off one disfavor, build the baths and take off one disfavor, and that subtracted two from my mm -hmm. negative score. So it it essentially gave me two points with fewer resources. So like that's the kind of thing that... You have to weigh. Right. But yeah, the but in the end, I guess the takeaway from that for me was the path card is sometimes not worth going mm -hmm. for, not worth paying attention to. But because you get to choose between two things. So early in the game, I was choosing my card based on the two resource or people that the other one was going to give me. Yeah. I never really looked at the Tetris formations, uh, and I, I was the only one that did not do anything down there either. But then... Later in the game, I would just pick the path card that already fit what I was already trying to do. Like, I got the one that was total gladiator strength at round five when I had already built four gladiator up. And so I was like, okay, I can do, like, four more of those. I can, like, lean a little bit further in to get an extra victory point and also get, you know, the stuff that comes from doing gladiators that I was already doing. Yeah. 
What sucked for me is I go into round six and I'm thinking I've got to get some approval. I've got to get rid of some of that disdain. So I need to go bribe at the baths. But what I didn't realize was there's a two bribe limit per year. So I was only able to do the two. And I was like, crap, like yeah. I should have done that last year too. And uh-huh. the more you have to bribe, the more it, the more expensive it gets. I know. Yep. Stone is Stone precious. Stone is, yes. I mean, I spent a bunch of it on the wall, but my last two turns, I was like, man, I wish I could do this, but I don't have the stone. And mm-hmm. I, I almost maxed out my stone production too. Yeah. Like I was... I was like so close. I was getting as much stone as you could possibly get. And I was still not having enough to do the things I wanted to do. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's definitely one of the more scarce and valuable resources, especially later in the game. Yeah. Well, what'd you guys think? I mean, it's similar to what was that other game we played just a couple weeks ago where it was similar, where we took our turns simultaneously. Oh, it was the forge one. Mm hmm. The 1920s furnace furnace or whatever. Uh I mean, it has a similar feel to that. I feel like that one's a little bit quicker. Oh, for sure. This one takes more time just because there's so much that you can do that you kind of have to think about the best strategy. I think one fun thing you could do with this game is have a time limit for your turns. It would make the game go much faster and it would make it so that you like have to make snap decisions. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that like was an unwritten rule, but like halfway through I started leaning into is we're using pens, not pencils. And so there were a couple times like halfway through my turn, I was like, oh, wait, if I like wind that one back and do something different. But and I tried remembering like, OK, I actually didn't cross that one out early in the game. Mm-hmm. Later in the game, I was just like, no, I I did that early in this turn. I wrote it in pen. I can't do anything else with it. I'm just moving forward with what I got. Yeah. And yeah, the time limit. So those decision making and that the analysis paralysis is the the buzz for it. Mm-hmm. Um, that can be huge in this game because there is there's too much, really, to digest and try to optimize. And so either applying a time limit or like really using your pen and never winding back and just once you've thrown out your little people, they're not coming back. Yeah, they have been spent. Yeah. Overall, though, I think these kind of simultaneous play games are fun, but it makes sense to me now why the community likes it as a one player game, because even even playing with three people, it still felt to me like a one player game. Mm -hmm. Yep. Almost, Mm -hmm. you know, like. The the only interactions we had with each other was like trading and scouting. We could use each other's cards, right, which is quite an advantage um with a multiplayer game if you are only able to use your card in a one player game then it limits your options quite a bit but other than that it felt like i was just playing by myself you know Mm -hmm. so it's it's not the type of game i would bring out with the boys because we all wanted to have a good time playing a game together, you know. And also, we joked about it earlier on that this we were unsure what kind of a podcast this would be as we, you know, were trying to talk through what we were doing. But because we were all so focused in on our individual sheets and there's so zero in our like even even some of these zero games where at least you're all working on the same board or you're all like there's some kind of turn or there's some kind of interaction that you can have and talk about the fun thing that you just did we're all just locked into our own thing. And so like I had a couple moves I thought, Oh, that's real. Like that, you know, snowballed really well. And I hit this and this and this, but I didn't even have to say it out loud. Cause like, I don't know. It's, no one cares about your fantasy football team. Like no, yeah. we're all yeah. doing our own thing. And you guys yeah. had those moments too, but we, we don't see it on a communal board. And so yeah, games, Games are supposed to be a little bit of a social lubricant. Like we do these in communities with three or four or whatever. This is a very like isolating <laughs> game, even when you're all together. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, I would say I I really enjoyed this game, uh-huh. actually. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I didn't mind. I don't mind zero player interaction if I'm with the right people. Being with you two, because you don't want to talk to us anyway. 
Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> That's what it goes. <laughs> there's just there's no stress. Sometimes you play with people and you know you're losing them and you start to feel anxious about that yeah, and feel exactly. bad about yeah. that. But with us, it's like we're here, we're ready to play. Mm-hmm. And we're in it for the game. We're in it. Yeah. So there's no worry about each other because that's what like we're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I didn't have to worry about that at all. So it I like how because we were all heavily thinking it didn't feel quiet because in my head I'm thinking all these different things. Yeah. It only got the only part I really didn't like about the entire game was just having to wait if one of us Brian took a little <laughs> longer. <laughs> there were a couple there were of multiple years times that I finished first. Yes, there were, there were I was just kidding. Years. There but were I multiple times where we had it's very long. Yeah, but there 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 were, every year you have to wait for someone. Maybe it's a couple minutes, maybe it's 5 minutes, but having just to kind of sit there and twiddle your thumbs can be a bit annoying. Because that's when you realize like even watching someone else play this game isn't really that fun either like i was the the time when brian took the longest like after each of us and we all did have our own turns of being taking the longest i I was guilty as well but like i was even like trying to watch brian's thought process and that wasn't it wasn't (laughs) i don't know what was going on like he was just still playing his game (laughs) so yeah for me the thing I, i think about like why i'm playing a board game versus why i'm playing a video game or why like there's this game realm and this limited of interaction or just like everyone's doing their own job felt like a video game to me not necessarily like the dynamics Mm -hmm. here Mm because this is very like you know it's got paper and pen and it's got the little wooden peoples um but this felt like a video game in that we're all we're all just kind of locked into our own thing and i could have had headphones on and just like Mm -hmm. playing my own job versus yeah a board game i do want a little bit more of that Mm -hmm. that's my personal taste i will say though too if if we had um if we weren't in this podcast setting and we threw this on a table in my living room and we had a show going on or we had some music and some snacks or whatever that's true then if we're waiting for somebody you know go get a drink stand up munch on some snacks watch the tv listen to some like you could just chill you could vibe yeah a that's little true. bit better. And this is yeah. like this is super unique. I've never played a game that's this that that lends itself that well to that kind of scene, you know. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Um you know, you said there there was like Cole, you're like there's like too much going on. For me, like I loved it. <laughs> Which is funny because when there was too much in my opinion going on in Castles of Burgundy, I didn't like it, uh-huh. but with this, it just, it worked in my brain. Yeah. And so I was just like, I don't know. It just, it, it didn't, it looks so complicated, but by the end of it, it, it wasn't complicated to me. Uh huh. So I, I don't know. I, I just really, I had a lot of fun with it trying to, there's, there's a billion different ways you can do this. That's, I love that. Like there's so out of all the games we've played. This game by far has the most paths towards victory. Mm-hmm. And I like a game that has so many different strategies because it's not going to get as repetitive. We could play again and and again and again and again, and it's never going to be quite the same because you're going to think of a different way to approach it. Mm-hmm. So this this makes sense why the community might vote this up at one player, because mm-hmm. now that I've played it with three, I want to play it again right now with one to see if I can hack a better system. Like just sit with it myself and do like two more playthroughs where I just try leaning way into the wall or leaning way into the Tetris pieces or, you know, to see what works. What's interesting is a lot of games when it's one, well, not a lot, but there are some games when you're playing one player, you're playing against a bot, right? Yeah. With this game, if you play one player, you're not. You're trying to beat a certain score, mm-hmm. which I find fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it, yeah, it. You're right. Like playing it by yourself, it's just you're just challenging yourself instead of you're you're competing against yourself versus trying to compete against an opponent, which is which is interesting as well, um, and also means that the setup isn't going to be very extensive at all which is nice yeah yeah it's an easy game to set up i mean 
grab I the two the pieces paper, of paper, put out the cards, and you're you're ready to go. The paper was the way to go. Had yeah. they not done paper, it would have been madness. Yeah. And yeah. other like I don't know points of advice for other people a lot of pen and paper games lend themselves really well to like laminating and using oh, like dry sure. erase market no, no 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 you need, you you need to just use the paper and write down you the can paper. laminate this but but <laughs> <laughs> just they give you 400 sheets of paper just use them yeah with with this I, so like a game that i have that has a lot of sheets is cartographers and that game we went Great through laminated. sheets quick because you can play with an infinite amount of people. Mm. So you go through them fast. So it's a great lamination game. Yeah. With this one, with the community saying it's best at one player, yeah, I think you're going to probably You'll keep those sheets for a while. Mm -hmm. If you get low, okay, you can laminate them. Yeah. But yeah, I would say, though, definitely not a family game. No, <laughs> like no, not. not one you'd whip out with kids. And... No, but even my parents, my wife, yeah, my no, like casual gamers, uh, never, bro. Yeah. Like you would tell them, you start trying to explain one little aspect of the game, and they, they I check out. They, <laughs> they would be like, I can't do this. Yes, there is a hard line on that weight score on Board Game Geek between two and three. Once you have crossed over into three, those casual game crowd are just going to turn their brains off because it's not worth it. Like that's, uh -huh. this is not what they're yeah. looking for in a board game. That what's, what's difficult is what the thing about this game is once you get it, I feel like you'll get it. Yeah. But it's just, you have to find a person where you have to almost prep them and say, there's this game. It's really fun. I think you'll enjoy it. But can you come in and expect 45 minutes of me trying to get you to grasp the game or what if i mean this is a such a good one player game it's annoying like the first time i played wingspan it was with someone that had played it like 50 times before they knew the strategy and i lost by 100 and it was just kind of a miserable experience for me and he won by a lot this like wingspan you have to have a group and you have to play it this he could have given to me i could have played it through twice Maybe he's played it twice before, whatever. And then we play and we feel like we're on equal footing. Mm -hmm. Whereas instead of having to teach, give me a YouTube video of how to and a couple sheets of paper and I play through this and I'm ready to go. Like that's, that is an option in this game that is not in anything else. Cause it's such a unique one player experience. Yeah. I would say that's true. Like if you have a buddy that you like to game with a lot and you, you played this game a couple of times and you feel like, Oh, I might have a leg up. Yeah, this could be a game where they could try to share it. Once once they uh, once you teach it or they read the rules or whatever, then they could kind of get behind it, but I I I want to play this again. Like I don't know how you both feel, but I liked it. I liked it enough that I'm like gun into like I want to have my hand at it again. There's so, I'm already thinking of like so many different ways I want to I want to play it. Uh-huh. I definitely liked it. I thought it was I thought it was a good game. There were, there's a lot to keep track of. And I feel like multiple times we had to go back to the rules and look things up. But then like you were saying, like once you have played it through once, I'm sure each future time you played, it, it's going to be quicker. You know, it's going to be smoother. Mm -hmm. um, I liked it. But there's that trade off that we already talked about of, it not being a social game. So mm -hmm. uh, we've already mentioned this, but if you're a social gamer, right. this isn't the game for you. But if we were to say, us three, hey, let's play this again. Oh, yeah. I'd have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just remembered, though. You remember how you were like, what do I do with these slaves? Uh -huh. Or these servants? What are they called? Yeah, I had like servants leftover purple guys. Purple ones, yeah. Boom. Ah, oh, trade them two, two for, for one. one. Yeah. I did that twice. You did? Yeah. Came in handy. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that's smart. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember how many I had left over. Was it? You had a decent amount. Yeah. But, I mean, you can only do it once yeah. per year. Yeah. But. And so that's the thing. <laughs> even if. Yeah, totally. Even if you are someone that's good at reading a rule book and kind of jumping into it. Uh-huh. You're you're still you still might miss some things your first yeah. playthrough, yeah. which is fine. 
It's not a big deal. Right. No, I mean, I still Played again. won handily. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. There was just, uh, it, there's something about, even though I, I lost of the three, I just enjoyed it. Like, yeah. I, I don't even care. Yeah. I just, I used my brain. It felt good. So, um, production, art, eh, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it, it doesn't stand out in any significant way. I, I do, what art there is, I like. I like the art of the picts on the cards. I like the art of the various, like, civilians. Like the traders, performers, that, priests. I love the performers artwork. It's sick. Yeah, it's very cool. So what artwork there is, I really like. But in other aspects, it's all really basic. Like the cards, it just... Yeah. Basic, straightforward, the, simple. What are they called? What are those cards called? The fate cards? Mm -hmm. The backs are cool, but the fronts are really kind of... I don't know what they were thinking. They're well, really it's boring. Just, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, just informa pure straightforward. Yeah, pure information. Cram a lot on there. Yeah. I feel like the paper, it almost seems like desaturated. Like, it seems like it needs a higher saturation, more contrast. The darks need to be darker. I don't know. I feel like if I threw this into Photoshop, I can make it look a lot prettier. Yeah, you probably could. <laughs> but... What was his name? Sam. Sam. Come, Come on, on, Sam. Sam. <laughs> he could have done better. I guess, I guess that's what I have to say. What art there is, I really like. There's just... <clears throat> they use more symbols than art, which is... I mean, it's fine. It's... it's They're cramming a lot of stinking yeah, stuff yes. on two pretty large pieces of paper. Yeah. Yes. So I'd give it like a mid-grade for aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not, a, it's not a turnoff by any means. No. It's like, take it or leave it, so I see it, and it's like, I don't know, it's almost, it, in a way, it's like it doesn't distract me, like I'm able to kind of focus on what I'm doing, I guess you could say. Yeah. Thematically, it was about the wall, like if you protect I like the, theme, though. the wall, and then the other like Roman ancillary stuff on the side, like if you get caught too much of in that. You forget the wall, you're not defending, you get disdain. So it all like worked for as much for as many moving parts as they have going on. It came back around to the art and the aesthetic and the theme of the game. Yeah. Fine. A a slightly above average. Wasn't mm. bad. It's just cool. At the very beginning of the rule book, it says when visiting the north of Britannia in 122 AD, the Roman Emperor Hadrian Augustus witnessed the aftermath of war between his armies and the savage Picts. In a show of Roman might, he ordered a wall to be built that would separate the Picts tribes from the rest of England. Grand in its design, the wall stretched 80 Roman miles from coast to coast. So it's like, it's, there's a lot of history behind it. And then when they, when they get into discussing... The wall guard, the sippy, the wall, the fort. They kind of in, it was in, in the, the rule, rule book. book they yeah, explained explain that was the cool. historical that was cool. aspect. I, appreciate that. I appreciated that a lot. I thought it was really cool. So I, I would, yeah, I would definitely say thematically, it's really cool. It's well done. I like the history dashed in without it being overdone by yes. any means. Yeah, like it's just really nice and simple but now I'm, it's almost kind of like I want to go do some research on that yeah and I feel like the more I know about the history the more I'm going to enjoy this yeah no that's valid true yeah so yeah I, I, I thought that was cool the rule book actually was really straightforward um, the only Cole what's your what's your one downside to the rule book what's the one thing that you wished they had changed <laughs> the favor thing yeah. moving it forward i and honestly by the time we got to what a favor was it made sense why they put it later because if they had explained what the favor was doing with battle they waited until very late to actually describe battle and so maybe if you mm -hmm. ex and i think putting battle towards the front would have reminded you that this is more about the wall and this is about the battle yeah. than they could have explained favor when they hit to it but again it made sense it was all right yeah to me like now that I've done 
enough episodes when I get to something I don't understand I'm like I know it's gonna come up later it's not a big deal yeah but I do enjoy just how well organized it was the fact that it just went top to bottom left to right super simple you didn't get lost and I think they understood that you could get lost so they just kind of thought okay I'm just just gonna explain each thing as we go we're gonna explain it well so even though there is a lot going on, the rule book is easy enough to understand. Did yeah. we have a chance? Was there, like, we called this one early, <laughs> early. Did we have a chance oh, to no. even oh, no, come up even, with a workable? Uh, yeah, no, there's, no. there's <laughs> no way we could have come up with a our own rules that made the slightest sense. Yeah, I, it's it, what's funny all the squares are just cost. Like that's I know the the doable. thing. I think the hard thing is the one key piece that we wouldn't have been able to figure out, but is crucial is understanding that the uh, fate cards show what you start with. Mm -hmm. Your starting resources. If you understood your starting resources, then I think we could start to think okay. Because this Maybe resource, you could spend things and resource get things production and... part of the thing is such a small portion of what your resources really are. So, like, even reading through very meticulously and finding, oh, there's a spot that says, you know, research production, do this every single year. Like, we mm -hmm. could have figured that out, but then we start with literally one brick. Right. And we hadn't filled in anything else. And so, how do you do anything? I still look at these papers and I just think to myself, yeah. If I didn't know what all this meant, it's it's just too it's too overwhelming. I really I think yeah maybe technically we could have figured it out, but after a significant amount of time, <laughs> we would have been here till forever. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's unfortunate that we had to take the L, but I'm glad we did. Yeah. But for the most part, I enjoyed it. The community said eight point one. I think I would give it an eight. I really would. I think I enjoyed it that much that I. I'm kind of right there with the community at an eight. 6.5. Like I really, it's, it is unique and it's the one player thing, but you know, as a one player game, it is probably a 7.5, but as a board game, I'd go a little lower. All the pieces, all the moving parts work together. It's a well-constructed game, but it's missing the, the part that makes a game a game to me. Sure. I'm hovering between seven and 7.5. There's a lot I liked about it, but same thing. Like if it's it's not one that I'd be excited to show my friends, you know. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, you 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 heard it here, everybody. This is what's so awesome about the hobby is there's a game for everyone. I say this all the time. <laughs> like my dad, I taught him how to play Jaipur, and he is increasingly becoming more and more obsessed with it that every time I go over there now he wants to play and he was not a board gamer three years ago four years ago I just I found a, you just have to find the game yes so I, I thought this everybody. was at an eight Cole thought this was at a 6.5 that, that's great that's like yeah. you can have you can have huge differences I just I love it I love it. There can someone, the community, all everyone could say, "Oh, this game's an eight, and we could all be like, "We didn't like that game," or everyone could say it's a six, and we thought it was an eight. So, don't ever let a rating sway you. Read about it. Look at the artwork. Look at the gameplay. If it sounds fun, go for it. That's yeah. right. So, great. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you had fun. That you enjoyed listening to our gameplay, our discussion of how it went. If you want to go and see our very quiet gameplay, <laughs> <True>. <laughs> basically no, nothing was said, head over to Patreon or subscribe on Spotify. And we hope that we will see all of you on our next episode. Adios. Bye. Later. Later.